Want to be in business with your spouse's partner when he or she is gone? Mm. Listen up, Kenner French with vastsolutionsgroup.com here. You paid for info, well, we're gonna add some value right here, right now. Well, if you have a partner in your business, you've gotta listen up. Now, when Marie Archer was diagnosed with a serious medical condition, the scare to her family and business associates <laughs> extended well beyond the expected concern for her health. Marie owns a small software design firm she built from scratch with the help of her business partner, Jeff Page. The company's success has always allowed Marie's family to live very comfortably. Though Marie's illness is no longer considered life-threatening, thank goodness, suppose she had died prematurely. What would have happened to her business interest in that case? Would Jeff have had access to a ready source of cash to buy out Marie's share of the company? If so, what would she have had to pay? And most importantly, what would such a tragedy have left the financial future of Marie's family? Caught up in the ongoing rush of day-to-day -day business activity, the two partners had never found time to address these specific questions. Fortunately, Marie's medical condition was caught early and she has had excellent prognosis for recovery. But the thought of what might have has served as a wake-up call for both Marie and Jeff, as well as their families. Now, let's go over the types of agreements. How does a business owner plan for this specific type of situation? Generally, with a buy-sell agreement funded with life insurance, there is the following. A buy-sell agreement is a legal contract that establishes a buyer for an owner's share of a business and stipulates the price to be paid. Buy-sell agreements are typically negotiated with partners, shareholders, or members of the management team, or even key employees who have an interest in a company's future ownership. A life insurance policy on the life on the owner's life usually funds the deal two commonly used types of buy sell agreements are cross purchase agreements and entity purchase agreements cross purchase agreement is negotiated between a business owner and each partner or shareholder if one party dies the survivors purchase the deceased shares at a previously agreed upon price with the life insurance funding the purchase a cross purchase agreement works in best in companies with only two or three owners typically as the, own, as the number of owners increases, it becomes expensive and administratively cumbersome for each owner to have a life insurance policy and a cross-purchase agreement on every other owner. For a company with a larger number of owners, an entity purchase agreement may be a little bit more workable. An entity purchase agreement is negotiated between the company and each shareholder. The company purchases a life insurance policy on each shareholder's life. This serves to reduce the administrative overhead of managing multiple buy-sell agreements and life insurance policies, a difficulty inherent in cross-purchase agreements. However, it is important to note that since the company owns the life insurance policies, the accumulated cash value may be vulnerable to corporate creditors. So that's a concern. Now, tax considerations apart from cost and administrative concerns, tax considerations also play an important role when deciding between a cross-purchase agreement and an entity purchase agreement. When an owner dies, one benefit of a cross-purchase agreement is that the surviving owner or owners receives a step up in basis for the newly acquired shares. In other words, future capital gains on the new shares are based on the purchase price spelled out in the original agreement, not on the deceased owner's original basis. Now, in contrast, an entity purchase agreement does not carry this advantage. Since the company purchases the shares of a deceased owner, the remaining shares of each surviving shareholder increases in value. Wh which type of an arrangement is best, everyone asked. When it deciding this, a company must weigh the potentially owner and lower cost and administrative ease of an entity purchase agreement against the possible tax advantages of the cross-purchase agreement, obviously. An, out, an ounce of prevention. Unfortunately, we never know what tomorrow will bring. Business owners currently operating without a buy-sell agreement in place should act usually now. If an unforeseen tragedy should occur, a buy-sell agreement could help ensure that the family members will benefit from the years of hard work spent building up some huge company. <laughs> Since buy-sell agreements are complex legal documents, it is best to consult a qualified insurance, legal, and tax professional to help obtain appropriate insurance and tax guidance. Give us a call if you need any help about any of the above mentioned concepts of buy-sells. The number 888-808-8278 or 
admin at vassolutionsgroup.com. I can tell you a number of times that buy selves have helped save some lives. Thanks again.